All right, guys, the weather is doing a little bit better as of right now. I think we're supposed to get some rain here in a little bit, but hopefully no more ice and snow and all that good stuff. But anyway, today we're working on the 350Z. I'm going to try to get the fuel line hooked up, the clutch cable hooked up, or with the you know, hydraulic line, whatever you want to call it. Get that stuff hooked up and test fire this thing. So let's get to work. But yeah, like I was saying, I'm gonna start, they probably get the fuel line hooked up. Um, I thought I ordered everything I need, but I also needed the throttle cable, so I had to order one of those. I just bought a universal one from Summit. Hopefully that's gonna be long enough. And I bought some AN fittings. I wasn't gonna like try to get too fancy, but I bought the, uh, the adapter to go from the hard line to the braided line. So just gotta make some lines, get this stuff hooked up. And I'll probably like, you know, just test fire it with like hooking to the battery and stuff like that just so the ECU and stuff will work and crank this thing over and uh, you know make sure it's gonna run which I'm sure it's going to but whatever so I'm gonna get to work get this stuff done and we'll get it fired up yeah one of the issues that I was having are you know dilemmas was I've already adapted the factory um, fuel rail to an AN line and I don't want the uh, fuel line <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can see it don't think you can see it but it's really close to the header man and I'm not a fan of that so this is soft line anyway from like the Nissan so I'm gonna take where the hard line is right here under the uh, the battery just on the uh, bottom of the car I'm gonna adapt that to that braided line run it up in the battery tray and across and into the fuel rail so you'll be out of the way of heat and stuff like that <clears throat> and as far as the throttle cable and the clutch line I have to drill a hole in this firewall so it can all get hooked up and I gotta make this line up so I had to go to the hardware store pick up an extension some fittings and stuff but we're gonna get it knocked out I think we'll start by drilling this hole <laughs> all right guys that's got like this little bitty hole saw or whatever I'm just kind of see it you guys better see it or not yeah it just kind of knocked a hole right there so hopefully hopefully this will work of course I'm gonna put a grommet on this thing guys but I foolishly didn't stop by O'Reilly's on my way home and I don't have any and this fucking brake booster hose has been getting on my nerves for like forever now oh man to be a camera guy thank you Fuck damn time so I'm hoping this is long enough because this is actually the the line for the RX-7 I'm sure you guys are getting some great footage of what's going on here Oh yeah, that's gonna be long enough. I'm gonna have to move some stuff, but you can barely see the clutch master cylinder. The line's right there at it, and it's sitting on top of that. I don't know why Siki makes her line so long, man. These dudes are fucking, they're crap, man. So that's sitting right on top of the really hot header. So I have to like put that up somehow, but you get the idea. I gotta do another hole in this general area for the brake booster vacuum line and then we'll do the throttle cable so yeah let's get that going all right get you guys caught up what we got going on real quick so we got the line for the clutch run um, I'll probably get some line just some little holders to hold it like right there and right there just so it's not rubbing or anything but it's hooked up um, it's about 20 miles too long thank you Siki and still gotta drill a hole for my brake booster this is also about the fuel line like I said uh, I just gotta put my AN on here 
my end fitting. So I just measure that, cut it, but it runs back through where the heater core hose would run through. Right there. I know some people are gonna love that, some people are gonna hate it, but this is gonna be a full blown, you know, torture you track car. And it's going right there. Of course I'll zip tie and put uh, holders on all this stuff so it's off and not rubbing on anything. ECU will be sitting right here where the battery is. I'll have a power shut off. Battery will be in the back. So I can just hook the shut off to here and the car, all the stuff will work on for the car, you know, the windshields or you know the windows, windshield wipers, all that stuff. But like I said, the hard line. You can kind of see the little adapter and everything right there. Oh. But I just oh, I push this out of the way. If y'all can get in there, see. But that line right there, I just kind of like hand bent it so it would run up the fire or you know inside the wheel arch instead of running through there right beside the header. Once again, I know some people are gonna love this, some people are gonna hate this. If you break the suspension, the suspension collapse, and it gets into the line, it could cause a leak and a fire. But once again, I'd much rather have it here and have a fire in my wheel well than have a fire under the hood of the car. Like I said, it's still a hard line, so it's not like it's a soft line or something. So this will resist, you know, busting more than anything else. There's like a bolt right here for where the, um, uh, the inner fender would be. So I might use that bolt to hold the line in. And I could put the inner fenders in and that would actually make that even more secure, but I don't think it's gonna hurt. Yeah, I think it's gonna work just fine. Um, we will find out, so. But anyway, I gotta do that. And I got the fuel pedal, or the gas pedal, all the stuff off of it. And I got the throttle cable kind of laid in place trying to figure out where I need to drill my hole and this right here so I can do this I'm gonna try I was hoping I had a bolt that would actually fit but I'm gonna run to the part store I'm gonna nut and get a nut we'll weld a nut back here with this little there was like a little bushing right here so I'm gonna weld a little nut right there so this line will just screw into the back of the pedal and uh, drill a hole for the line to go through the firewall. And that should take care of hooking up everything except for the radiator and the drive shaft, which have to drop the differential. So I can put solid, dif solid differential brace bushings in, whatever, geez, and do that, service that thing, and put a brace on it. So hopefully it will hold up. And just some little odds and ends stuff. It is coming along extremely well. I am going to have to notch the, which I'll get into that later. I'm going to have to notch the car up front a little bit for the radiator because I got the biggest one that I could find. It's like a 16th too wide to fit in between the frame rails. So I don't care. I just want this thing to stay cool. So if I get into an accident or something, you know, there's a good chance it could, you know, if the frame rails bend, it could bust the radiator and stuff like that. But I'd much rather be sitting out of a track day because I was stupid and got into an accident than my car is just junky and overheats every lap so yeah not really worried about that but i'm going to continue on and get these few things knocked out and then we'll test fire this thing and um yeah <laughs> maybe the next one we'll get the radiator in there and take the same for a drive and the differential jeez it's always more more work anyway i'm gonna get the little odds and ends of these things knocked out the fuel system and that uh, gas or gas throttle cable, jeez. So this happens. Get in a rush, can't even talk. But yeah, get the throttle cable, get the holes drilled, and get it where it actually works correctly. Cut that fuel line, put the fitting on it, and fire this thing up. Okay, I've actually forgot like what bit, what I've recorded or not. So I've been like working on this thing pretty steady, trying to get it together so I could actually start working on the FDR X7 again. But we got a decent amount done. I'm gonna go ahead and just walk you around the car and show you the stuff we've done. Okay, we got the radiator in here. Um, had to notch the frame. Like I said, it was a little, little too big, but I knew that. I measured it before I bought it. But I wanted to get the biggest one I could get in there, and this was the only option I could get, or one that's gonna be, you know, sitting like, you know, three inches shorter or something. So I didn't want that. So I figured notching the frame would be better. But anyway, so we got the exhaust on and everything. 
Got the throttle cable made. That's hooked up, going to the firewall right there. Fuel line. I'm gonna keep the ECU right in here. Like I said, my wiring's a mess right now. I'll clean it up later. Got the fuel line going through here and hooking up to the hard line. I don't think I've actually showed y'all the inside of this thing yet, but I kind of went a little crazy <laughs> and decided to delete everything. So I'm probably going to buy like a painless wiring harness for my headlights, tail lights, and all that good stuff. But yeah, it's pretty much just going to be, you know, what I want it to be—a very simple drift car. Got the battery in the back. Like I said, wiring is just temporary. Um, and if you've seen another video, I used to have like um, a hydro handbrake, and it was running under the car, and I thought that was kind of sketchy, so I had the differential out. So I just drilled a hole, put a T-fitting right here, and I got a hard line running up to the handbrake, and then soft lines going out to the back. But okay, we're at the back of the car right now, looking at the differential. I put some GK Tech solid diff bushings and their brace. But yeah, I was kind of waiting to do that because I didn't want to like, you know, take the different, put the drive shaft in, have to take the differential back out, take the drive shaft back out, put the differential bushing in. So, you know, finally broke down and done that. <laughs> but I got everything working, so it'll pretty much be like a regular car. It's just gonna be wired myself. I'm gonna have power windows but instead of the switches being on the door there'll be one switch in the center of the car um you'll still have power locks just not like keyless entry basically when you lock the passenger driver door the passenger door will lock or unlock so but very minimum gauges probably have like an oil pressure like manual gauges and water temp and voltage in the center right above the radio and then like just a tack right above the steering wheel so <laughs> but it works just like it's supposed to. You know, you turn the key and everything cuts on and you don't have to worry about flipping switches and all that crazy stuff, which is the way I like it. Fuel pump. Cranks up. So, basically got some stupid little things to take care of before it's actually going to be drivable. Got to get tires and adjust the coilovers. But pretty much the stuff we have to do, I have to make the upper radiator core support to hold everything, like the bumper and all that good stuff. I'm going to use like the existing headlight brackets and just kind of tie it all together. Um, like I said, I'm not really building this to take any impact, so I'm hoping not to crash. <laughs> but stuff we need to do, I got to order some O2 sensor bongs, get those welded in. I got to weld or um, have to order some extensions for the O2 sensors because these headers, they're like way back with O2 sensors hook up. So I do that. Actually ended up damaging the AN fitting on the oil filter relocation um, thing when I was trying to put the headers in. <laughs> so I have to order new AN fittings. Uh, it's got like a small leak, thanks to me. Um, I have to drill a hole in the radiator and put like a little adapter for the steam port on the top of the cylinder heads. What else? That's pretty much it. And I'm gonna take the seats out of the FDRX7 so I'll actually have some nice racing seats in here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And like, like it'd be on the ground and running. Um, but I'll still need to uh, buy a crazy, I really want like a crazy, you know, angle kit, like just wicked because <laughs> um, I've never had an angle kit before so I think this is going to be the closest to actually having a proper drift car I've ever had you know have seats handbrake um, decent power great torque actually have coilovers um, so decent suspension so I mean it should be a really good car so I don't want to like just throw on some bolt on like little bitty angle kit I'd like to get like something kind of big and see uh see the the night and day difference between like a total clapped out garbage car with like a welded differential compared to like something that's actually set up and 
you know, supposed to go drifting. So, <laughs> yeah, that's game plans. And I also have to get fans too. Um, I was probably going to use the stock 350Z fans or some fans off of uh, Camaro. So, not too sure. We'll see. Um, I think there'll be enough to cool it since it's just cooling the radiator and not having to go through like a denser and stuff like that. And we got this big old aluminum radiator up front, so it should be good. But yeah, we are getting extremely, extremely close, and I gotta figure out a intake. So, yeah, just a bunch of stupid little things. All the hard, all the hard work is pretty much done except for the wiring. That's considered hard work, but all the heavy lifting, that stuff like crawling under the ground, everything. So. The exhaust is bolted up. Like I said, I have to take the uh, have to take the wire pipe, you know, back out to uh, weld um, some O2 sensor bongs in there. So there's still some work to be done, guys. But we are really close to doing a burnout in this thing. Which you know, who doesn't want to see a big smoky burnout? I just want to get this thing together and get it on the ground so I can start working on the FD Arc 7. That's what I'm really wanting to do. Like I said, I really don't care about the 350Z. I mean, I, I do, but, you know, I want my FD back together, so. And we've been making a trip to Road Atlanta for Grid Life and Formula Drift this year, so I would like to be in the car that I really care about, which is my FD, so. But yeah, that's enough rambling. I'm going to go ahead here and see what kind of footage I have, because like I said, I'm totally lost. Like, I've been, like, going crazy back and forth, working on the MR2, working on this, my 9 to 5, and all kind of stuff, man. Just wide open. But we're getting it done. I'm not making excuses. I'm really, 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 really pumped. And um, I can't wait to do more stuff, you know. Get an angle kit for the Corvette, get seats for the Corvette. Same thing for this angle kit. I actually have some cars where I can actually go and drive and have fun this year, which is the game plan. And for all the RC guys, haven't forgot about y'all. Um, it's just really hard to get to the track, especially right now, everything going on. But I have a solution for that. Um, I'm hoping to build my own personal RC car track in my backyard. I got about like a half an acre field. So, you know, look forward to that if you're into RC stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's enough of me rambling. I was just want to make a quick little video and get everything caught up before I have to go to work in the morning. But we are making good progress. So, you know, even though I'm the worst YouTuber in the world and I don't record anything and I just kind of get in a hurry and want to go, but you know, it is what it is. We make a progress. I'm looking forward to getting this thing on track. But like always guys, I greatly appreciate all the support, liking, sharing, watching, all that good stuff. It means the world to me and I greatly appreciate it. But that's going to be the end of this video and we'll see you on the next one guys. Mm -hmm.